Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to another video. The T on MPD and relationships. Look to all of our new subscribers and new followers. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Thank you all so much for sharing the content. And of course, to my tribe and family at large, welcome back. Thank you all for coming back again to see what I have to say on the matter. All right. So y'all know on Thursday nights, we do our Thursday night live stream every Thursday night live 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Yes, indeed. We are live right here on the channel. I want to see you here. Come on out. Come on out. And y'all know every time we drop a video on the channel, the goal of the day is 1.2K plus, 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 plus. Okay. If you rocks with your girl, if you rocks with your girl, hit that like button one time for me. <laughs> All right. So let's jump into the topic of this video. I want to get into it. I want to talk about what happens um, when you try to love a narcissist. I want to put this out here because I want to clear up, you know, the lie. I want to debunk the lie about, um, you know, a narcissist actually saying they love their spouse or uh, they love their children or... Um, they realize the love that you tried to give to them. I want to debunk that lie. I want to talk about it. You know, I want to talk about when you try to love a narcissist. You know, what's going to happen when you try to do that? Well, first of all, we're dealing with a person that un that does not understand what love truly is. Okay, now they may tell you all of the horrible things that happened to them in the past. But if you if you pay very close attention, then what you will realize, and I'll give you a little bit of revelation in this video too. If you if you pay very close attention, when they're talking about all of the horrible things that happened to them in the past, so you have to surmise from that that a person that will allow all of these things to happen to them could not possibly love themselves. I have to put it out there like that. Um, because their stories are so gut wrenching a lot of times and so heartbreaking and they seem to be perpetual or constant. I mean, you know, this person did that to them. That person did that to them. You know, this person left them for this, you know, us, we're not really thinking about it at that point because a lot of us were broken when we got with them faulty wiring fragmented foundation, but you didn't take a moment to step back and say, listen, if this person allowed all of this to happen to them, or, you know, basically all of this has happened to them, why didn't that mechanism kick in? You know, to tell them, hey, this is abuse. Did you ever think about that? Yeah, if you're like me, you probably didn't think about it. Yeah, you didn't. So what happens is that's one of the things you got to ask yourself. So then what happens is that this is what happens when you try to love them. See, a narcissist is only interested in you really, honestly, during the love bomb. Okay. After that, they're really not interested in you because the love bomb is actually there to hook you. And that's it. You understand what I'm saying? Now, what happens is during the love bomb, that that is that is the time where they really engage with you. Okay? They they engage because that's the time that you're giving them what they want most. You're giving them your time. You're giving them your attention. You're giving them, you know, what they desire most. And y'all, whether you notice or not. A narcissist doesn't, they don't know how to receive your love, okay? So when you think that you're going to try to love a narcissist, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen to you when you try to love a narcissist. Because what happens is after the love bomb stage, you begin to want more. Listen to what I'm saying. You begin to want more. You come to a place where you're like, you know, I really like this person. I really, and, and a narcissist is quick to tell you that they love you. But, you know, they'll do that in two days, right? Because to them, the attention that you're giving them, they equate that to love. That, they really, in their mind, that's what love is to them. Because it's not what they got, you know, when they were growing up in the abusive environment that they grew up in. So they're quick to tell you 
because you're you're giving them i mean just as much as uh love bomb they're giving you, you uh you're giving it right back to them so that's what prompts them to say that i'm giving you some revelation now here's the deal you may not say that you love them back right away a lot of you probably said it maybe a couple of weeks a few weeks down the line you might have told them that now Here's the, here's the here's here's the part right here that you really need to pay attention to as well. How many of you remember when you actually told the narcissist that you love them and you told them that you know you you really falling for them or whatever and they they mimicked that back. Well, I told you first. I told you I loved you first. So you know you kind of going back and forth with that. You know what I'm saying? You just kind of still in that stage. I want y'all to hit that like button because I'm gonna give you some revelation right here. Now, right after you told that narcissist, right after you told him, I loved you. It was soon after that you hit the devaluation stage. Bam. You didn't even know what happened. You're like, what just happened here? It's like all hell broke loose, like the bottom fell out. You're like, but I just thought we were. That's when you saw you 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 basically started you be uh you started to, um, they started to ghost you, um, started to break pattern a little bit. You know, started to kind of um. Oh, I'm going to call you right back and it's hours later. Whereas they would normally call you right back. Let me tell you what happened. Let me, I, I want to give you some revelation. When the narcissist, when you told the narcissist that you love them, okay, and that you were falling for them, it triggered, it triggered that devalue mechanism in them. Why? Because what they associate love with is trauma, okay? Because when you said that you love them, the trigger in their mind was that love is associated with pain. It's okay for them to tell you that they love you because it's the lie that they have to tell in order to get you to drop your guard. You got to remember you're dealing with a demonic spirit that is manipulative, highly manipulative and it knows what it has to say to you in order for you to get you to drop in in order to get you to drop that guard down okay so it can get in to do the damage that it wants to do to you so you got to understand this is what happens so it ha it understands what has to happen to hook you right but what you didn't know is that that was the hook but once you got, once you were on the hook, the soul tie had already been created. Because by this time, a lot of you have had sex with them. So you have a bona fide soul tie. And now, once you told them that you love them, that's when the trauma bond started. You were, you, at that point, you were under a spell. You were under the spell of the trauma bond. Now, here's what happened. It tri You telling them, this is what happens when you try to love them. You first tell them that you love them. That's when you're going to hit that. You're going to hit that devaluation stage because it triggers them. And automatically, once they feel like you're all in, bam, you have to be devalued because they have to be able to detach from you because they can't risk having that traumatic experience that they they had as a child when they tried to love or at the last point where they thought they were supposed to be loved you get what i'm saying so this is what happens so they got it they have to devalue you and they have to get you in a place of opposition so at this point you know they've always been your enemy you just didn't know it but at this point they have to see you like they saw the person or the people that abused them in childhood OK, you have to now be their opposition. You have to be their opponent at that particular time. So this is why you go through the, the challenges of competition with them. You go through the challenges of, of them cheating on you, lying to you. Why? Because that is their way of punishing you for trying to love them. Yes. That's their way of punishing you. You have to be punished for trying to love them. Why? Because a demon doesn't want love. 
And whenever you try to love them when that is not their nature, you have to be punished for that because they don't want that entity inside of them do, does not want the true self to be able to come forward. Because listen, love is a very powerful element. And although a narcissist doesn't doesn't possess the ability to love, they don't possess the ability to love, not because they don't want, not because they can't, it's because they don't want to. They choose not to love. And see, the, now, uh, uh, what you also have to know, a, a narcissist will, while they're under that uh, demonic uh, possession, because at this point I don't I don't believe that it's an oppression. It's a possession because they they lack the ability to control their impulses. So what does that mean? You got a whole entity that is in control. You understand what I'm saying? So at this point, basically they're choosing not to love you. They're choosing not to love you. They don't want love. So now that you have uh, now that you've said that that you love them, that demon cannot risk. Listen, cannot risk the powerful element of love actually, 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 I'm sorry, actually loving them to a place of that entity being removed from them. Because like I said, love is very powerful. And if there could be a, a space where that narcissist could realize that love is is a good thing and that listen this person really does care about me this person really but see that entity can't they can't risk that happening so when you tell them you love them it has to trigger the narcissist to abuse you at that point because you have to because you got to understand that it's two people being abused at the same time so the entity don't like the narcissist and it hates you too it hates both of you but what what's going to happen is two people are going to get destroyed for the price of one okay so one person is going to destroy two people because of the entity that's involved in this i want y'all to hit the like but i'm giving you revelation when you when a narcissist knows that you love them they have to they have to abuse you they have to they have to do it they have to do it why because it's the spirit that controls them it's because love is a trigger for them they'll tell you all day they won't love They'll tell you all they want is peace all they want is someone to love them it it couldn't be farther from the truth they don't know what love is they don't know how to love. And when you ask them, if you ever sat down and talked to them, they'll tell you if they really be honest with you and, and they start to talk about the things that happened to them in their past, you will see that these people do not have, they have no clue what love is. And this is why they were the happiest with you during the love bomb stage. That is because when you said the words, I love you. I'm all in. I'm here for you. I'm never going anywhere. That's what triggered that devaluation. And that's why you didn't understand what happened. It was like all of a sudden, this person turned into a completely different person. That's why a lot of times these relationship coaches will tell you, well, you know, don't don't let them know where they are with you. You know, kind of keep them, you know, keep it a mystery. Don't tell a man this and that. Don't tell them that you're all in and this and that. Some of that is true for people that are that do not have narcissistic personality disorder. They can just be a player or whatever. Some of that is true. But a lot of times you are dealing with people that are dysfunctional, like a narcissist, that do not have the ability to love. The only thing that you can give them at best is attention. When you try to love them, they are going to, without a shadow of a doubt, abuse you. And a lot of I, I, y'all gonna testify that devaluation stage came hard hard and fast when they knew that you were in love with them they started to ghost you they started to put up these uh time blocks where they were missing you know and some of them uh did a mini discard at that point they left because you triggered that you tr they like love you know all of this now they all going through the love bomb stage they telling you all of this and you're thinking oh when i really tell them that i love them they're gonna really be like oh because they'll keep asking you so do you love me so i'm just waiting when, when are you gonna tell me back when i, I just want to know when, when are you gonna ever love me they want to know 
because they know they want to know when they are going to be able to when that trigger is going to happen and they have to start in on the devaluation they have to do it they have to it is it's it's ingrained in the disorder it is how their demons are set up i said it these sideways listen these side stepping zebras this is how they do it these helminted frogs they don't want love they want attention that's it they don't know how to process love family that's it when you try to uh, love a narcissist, you gonna, you are going to get cheated on. You're going to get lied to. You are going to get gaslighted. You are going to get projected onto because it triggers all of those different abuse tactics. Why? Because this is what happened to them as a child. And it's an unconscious. It's almost like it's an unconscious thing that they do because they're not in control. It's another entity that's in control. Listen, that true self is so buried under all of that demonic energy that they have. They don't even know how to, um, they don't even know how to get out themselves. This is why I tell you, they need a full on exorcism and um, a million hours of therapy to be, to, to get at least halfway right. The devil is a whole lie. When you find out you are dealing with somebody like this, you don't try to love that. You, you, if at, at best, if you want to pray for him, you go ahead and pray for him. You know, if that's what you want to do. But the best thing to do is to just leave family. Just get out. Just go ahead and leave. A narcissist can't love you. They can't love you. And when you try to love them, what you're going to get is abuse. That's it. And that's all family. So I wanted to put this out for you. I want y'all to have a wonderful week. Uh, you know, have a wonderful day. And you all be good to yourselves, okay? And I will see you all on the next video. I love you, family. I will see you all on the next video. And I will see you all healed at the top. Shalom, family. Peace.